It's no secret that the most powerful hormone in the body is insulin. Hey, how's it going everybody? It's Ryan Saplin here, fat loss strength coach, coming to you today with a video about insulin. It's no secret that insulin is the most powerful hormone in the body. It is the modulator of growth and energy transport. And I kind of want to just talk a little bit about nutrition and just share some cool stuff I learned today, or I guess stuff that I relearned. But because I don't really talk about it every single day, I wanted to share it with you because I thought you might find it interesting for those that love geeking out on nutritional science. And I actually texted to Nas, one of my, uh, my podcast uh, partner in crime on the Think Like a Modern Man show. Uh, but let's go see here. So when insulin, so it's about insulin, okay? So when insulin level drops, gluco glucagon production goes up. So understand that insulin and glucagon are like two sides of a coin, or basically they, they work in like yin, yin and yang. They work with one another. So when insulin drops, glucagon production goes up. So I guess I should take a few steps back. Insulin is sort of an oversimplified version of shovel of shovels. They shovel sugar typically the nutrients from calories uh, into your cells, your muscle cells, your fat cells. So your body is sort of like as a transportation device. So when you eat a lot of food, you produce a lot of insulin. Typically carbohydrates has the most dramatic effect on insulin. So now this is important to understand because insulin is a storage hormone. It is also a, it's a growth hormone. It makes the muscles grow. It makes the fat grow as well. So that's just one way of understanding it. And just to repeat what I just said earlier, when insulin level drops, glucagon production goes up. Glucagon is, so after you're done eating, your insulin level drops. When your insulin level drops, you're starting to have not low blood sugar, but basically normal blood sugar. And let's say you go six, seven, maybe 12 hours without eating, your blood, your insulin level drops significantly. And so glucagon starts to pick up. What glucagon is, is, is um, let me read the continue reading. Glucagon targets the liver and breaks down stored glycogen, inhibiting glycogen synthesis. So let me repeat that. Glucagon targets the liver and breaks down stored glycogen, inhibiting glycogen synthesis. Now the glucagon, okay? Glucagon is targeting the liver, so that way, because there's stored glycogen inside the liver to get the blood sugar back up, right? Because that's essentially what's happening, is trying to keep your blood sugar level. So it stops uh, the synthesis of glycogen. So remember, glycogen is muscle gasoline, it's muscle fuel. It also inhibits fatty acid synthesis. So two things happen when insulin level drops, uh, glucagon production goes up. When glucagon production goes up, glucagon starts to tell your liver to release some sugar basically to get your maintain your blood sugar level. It also starts to tell, it tells, tells your body to stop making glycogen, right? Stop storing glycogen. So stop storing fuel. Uh, the other thing it does is it also stops fatty acid production. So meaning your body stops storing fat because glucagon has gone up. Glucagon also stimulates gluconeogenesis and blocks glycolysis. Now this is actually a really important fact that you actually, I think is the most coolest part of this video that I'm making is glucon also stimulates gluconeogenesis and blocks glycolysis. So gluconeogenesis, gluco, glucose, neogenesis, that means the breakdown of glucose. Is that right? That doesn't sound right. I said that wrong. I, let me take that back. I just know gluconeogenesis means the breakdown of protein. That's what it means. It means your body is breaking down protein. Gluco, gluconeogenesis. I don't, don't remember the root word, but gluconeogenesis means your body is breaking down protein and turning it into sugar, basically. Your body, this, this is how muscle loss kind of happens. But there's more to the story. And it blocks glycolysis. Now, what is glycolysis and why is glycolysis important to you? Gly glycolysis, the glycolytic system, is that moment when you're doing like a very high rep set, like 20 reps or something, or maybe you're doing a CrossFit and wah, like a Metcon, or you're doing sprints. That's glycolysis. Glycolysis is extremely important for very intense, high burst, uh, the typically long dur longer duration and uh, longer duration intensity. So not like a one rep max on a deadlift squat or bench press. It's really more like a like a high rep max rep set. So like doing you know 75, 80 percent of your one rep max for max reps, for example. That's more of what's glycolytic. Uh, what's really glycolytic is sprinting, like doing some intervals. Uh, essentially, when you get that almost like that lactic acid uh, response when you start to feel your muscles burn. Okay, so that's why it's bad to do long wads 
or too many Metcons on low carb. So I'm saying this, to, texting this to Nas because Nas is into CrossFit, is if you, um, if you're doing a long wad and you have a long workout, right, a long high intensity workout and your carbohydrates are low, you're going to have trouble maintaining intensity level. Uh, again, take this into context. It depends on what fitness level you're at and also how capable you are to push yourself. Because a lot of the time, if you're out of shape, it really doesn't make a difference because, you know, even though you might feel low in energy, you still won't push yourself that hard. Not enough to make the difference in the caloric deficit. I just want you to understand these kind of this relationship of insulin and also the difference between insulin and um, glucagon and how when insulin drops, glucagon goes up. And when glucagon goes down, insulin goes up. So it's almost like glucagon and insulin are sort of like these modulators of controlling your blood sugar. And that's essentially kind of what keeps your energy level. And if you're sensitive to carbohydrates, what ends up happening is that your body's production of insulin uh, basically gets overproduced. So when you eat something, your body overproduces insulin, and then it, it essentially shuttles all your blood sugar into the system, or into the places where it needs to go. But then what ends up happening is that your blood sugar tanks because your body produced too much insulin, which gives you that sugar crash, that fatigue. And it doesn't even have to be carbs. Typically, it is carbs, but if you have a lot of protein, a lot of carbs, just a lot of food in general, it will make you sleepy. There's actually two things that make you sleepy. One is that blood sugar crash. That's an abrupt, very, very sleepiness from carbs. And then there's like the mild sleepiness, which is typically typically a combination of that mild sugar crash or low blood sugar crash, but mostly uh, blood going to digestion. Uh, I've read that before. That's actually an important fact. So even if you have a high protein, a high protein meal actually will actually release insulin too because your body is um, synthesizing sugar from protein. And let's go see what else is there. And that's what I wanted to say. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will continue to make more nutrition videos. Hope it helps kind of fill in the pieces of understanding how glycogen, I mean, glycogen, how insulin works in the body. Remember, it's a transportation system. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, but other than that, if you got a question, uh, leave a comment below. You can email me at ryan at ryansaplin.com. You can also click over here. There'll be a link for you to click on. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe to my email list where I sort of write about these different things. And um, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Share the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.